When it comes to the perfect combination of styling and practicality, well, you just can't beat an estate. And that is an opinion which I know a lot of you guys share with me. But as we move into the electric revolution, more and more of our larger accommodating cars are becoming SUVs. And that's a real shame in my opinion. In fact, the only estate electric cars you can get are the MG5, you can get the new Astra Space Tourer, or this. This is the Peugeot E308 station wagon. Hi guys, I'm Tish and welcome back to my channel, Auto Social UK. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about the Peugeot E308 and I'm gonna be testing out the station wagon. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you do like new car reviews and car content, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. The big news in Peugeot at the moment is of course the new Peugeot E3008. Now this is an SUV and the headline news is it will sit on a new platform, the STLA or Stellar Medium platform. And it's going to accommodate a battery of up to 98 kilowatts and a range up to 435 miles, massive miles. This, however, sits on the existing platform with the existing batteries. And that means it has a range of around 250 miles. Is that enough to keep up with the current cars which are being released at the moment? Well, hopefully, when I drive this car today, we'll find out if range really matters when you tick all other boxes. So if that sounds good, please do keep watching. And first off, let's get into, well, all the specifications you can have in your Peugeot E308. The station wagon will be available in petrol, hybrid and even diesel, with the petrol starting at just under £30,000. Peugeot has yet to confirm definitive UK prices for the station wagon, but it will be sensible to assume it will cost around £1,000 more than the equivalent hatchback, giving it a starting figure of around £41,000. And the GT tested here, without options, will probably cost you around £43,000. Anything but cheap but right now they do have the market at their fingertips. And if you're not fussed about an estate, well, the Tesla Model 3 is more affordable and trumps the 308 in pretty much all of the important lecky bits. We all have our own tastes, but you've got to hand it to Peugeot. This has got to be one of the best looking cars which is currently on the market. I like almost everything about it. In fact, I've been trying to think of something I don't like and well, Maybe I'll find something as we go throughout the video, but it really looks super sharp. I love it in the white as well. It looks great, contrasted with the black door mirrors and also this black gloss grille. But of course, it's not all completely solid black. You've actually got chrome tipped at the top, which really does make it sparkle when the sun hits it. I also love the elements of gloss black, which surround those new Fang headlamps, which are so iconic to Peugeot. You've got some really slim lights in here, which are actually clamshelled with the bonnet over the top. And they're in the three signature design, which is also very iconic to Peugeot. Around the front, you've also got the massive Peugeot badge as well, which I know a lot of people don't like, but I actually think looks really great. Wheels. Wheels are something that Peugeot are really stamping their personality on. And these are definitely something which are dividing opinions. Personally, when I drive a car for a week, they look great, I love them. Would I want to own such a busy alloy wheel? Possibly not, especially when I have seen some of the previous generation cars, which have come from French car makers, which have started to corrode. And as soon as these start to corrode, they're going to be very expensive to replace. You've also got the large Peugeot badge on the side. Once again, I think this looks great and it just really helps to add to the silhouette. The silhouette of this car is very, very simple, but I really like the way you've got a body colored panel along the bottom, which just makes it look a little bit lower. It almost gives it a bit of aggression. You've also got some contrasting black gloss roof rails, and then it all comes down to the rear of the car. And actually, the rear of the car might be my favorite bit. Peugeot really know what they're doing when it comes to building estates. Look at this. 
That looks great, doesn't it? I know not everybody's going to agree and it's going to be a little bit busy for some people's tastes, but I really applaud Peugeot for going out there with their designs. I think this looks brilliant. I love how it's very interesting. There's lots of elements to look at. You've got that roof spoiler at the top, very, very subtle, but the gloss black on the sides and the black underneath just help finish it and almost blend it in with the rear window. You've got those iconic 3D lights, rear tail lights with the lion slashes built into them, brilliant. And I also love the way you've got this really sharp line and then you've got the Peugeot badge underneath. Again, you've got another sharp line underneath here where you'll find your controls for opening the boot. And then at the bottom, you've got a gloss black diffuser. I found something I don't like. We probably all saw it coming. Why have they put those silly chrome detail parts to make it look like they almost have exhausts? I get that they want it to look like a sporty car, but this is an electric car. Please remember that, Peugeot. So, inside the boot. Of course, this is where it gets very interesting on the SW. Inside of here, you will find 548 litres of boot space, so massive. And also, if you drop down the rear seats, then you'll find that adding an extra 1,000 litres. It's nearly 1,500 litres of space once you put the rear seats down. It's also super practical. As you can see, you've got this flat load area, and it's actually quite low as well. So if you've got dogs, this could be the electric car to go for. In fact, I'm remembering now I think this is even more practical than perhaps the MG5 despite the fact that of course that is a little bit cheaper. In fact comparing them now the MG5 has 464 litres so just under a hundred less than the Peugeot. The load area is also higher and there's a load lip so nowhere near as dog friendly. Now you do also have a little bit of storage underneath the boot. I mean, you could probably just about squeeze your cables in there, but most of the time, if you keep your cables at home, it's a nice bit of added storage just to keep things out of sight. You don't get an electric boot as standard, but of course, on a car like this, it's very welcomed. Power is sent from the electric motor to the front wheels to power the E308. And how much power you get depends what mode you're in. So if you pop it into economy mode, you will really feel a sudden pullback of power. This gives you 108 brake horsepower and it's paired together with 220 newton meters of torque. It really does feel quite slow. But if you pop it into normal mode, this gives you slightly more brake horsepower at 136, but the torque stays the same. Now, if you want the maximum amount of power, then you'll go into sport mode, and this will give you 156 brake horsepower paired together with a little bit more torque at 270. This feels much more enjoyable to drive, and actually it matches the rest of the car because the rest of the car feels quite sporty. Of course, you've got this classic sporty small steering wheel and the steering is really well weighted it actually feels a little bit on the heavy side which i personally really like it's also got a slightly sporty setup in the fact that the suspension is quite firm it's not as firm as some of its rivals but it's kind of a sweet spot actually it feels engaging to drive whilst not being rough over the roads if you did want the maximum range of 260, this is probably where you're going to want to sit at in economy. But if you want to enjoy the car, then I'd say you are going to be wanting to sit in sport. But as you can imagine, you're going to go through more range. So let's talk about range, 260 miles. It's not too bad. And I know probably already people have commented down below, it will never do 260 miles. And that's a fair point because previous generations of Stellantis products were not 
great, especially the really early models. They had claimed 200 range and in the winter, because they didn't get a heat pump as standard, it meant that a lot of cars were barely doing 130 miles and this really put off a lot of people who were early adopters. However, Peugeot have said that for this new generation of battery, which is in the E308, they've worked really hard to get the most amount of range and make it as economical as possible. In fact, they're saying that this is the most economical car in its class, which is a pretty bold claim because there's some really, really impressive cars in this class. But let's say it does 220 miles. That's to be safe, especially if you're putting it in sport mode. I don't think that's too bad. How often do you do over 220 miles a day? Not very often. And to have the combination of the fantastic looks, the engaging drive and 220 miles, I think that's a very good offering. Of course, I am living in cuckoo land, kind of, and it's a hope that it can do that. And maybe we need to wait and see. We need to wait and have the new generations of batteries tested to see whether they are more economical than the previous generations. But I say if it can achieve that 220, I think it's a brilliant option. Space in the back. Well, it's pretty good. I guess I'm not outstanded by it. I was expecting a lot from this car, but there's not an enormous amount of space. I've got loads of headroom, so that's really good. Legroom is a tiny bit tight. I think it could be a little bit more. And I think I'm comparing this to the Hyundai Ioniq 6, in which I was actually able to lie in the footwell. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna attempt it. I could, I could squeeze in there, but I probably wouldn't get back out. And the main reason for that is because you do have a very conventional centre console, which comes quite far back. And that's a real shame because it means anyone sitting in the middle is going to have to straddle that. They're never going to get their knees behind it unless they're, well, absolutely tiny. The benefit of this is the fact that you do have rear climate. It's not three zones so you can't have a different climate but you do have ventilation in the back and you've also got two USB-C slots as well which is a good thing I guess but it would be nice to have the additional space especially if you're going to be carrying three people in the back lots of the time. Two people it's going to be great it really will be fine even for six footers. In terms of things that you get in the back you've got those charging ports you also get a nice sturdy armrest with a couple of cup holders and a section to put your mobile phone. The backs of the seats are hard, so they're going to be able to wipe clean and you'll be able to keep clean and tidy. And just in terms of quality, just like the front of the car, quality feels very good in the back, especially in this higher spec model. It's all very good. I just think if you're looking for that luxury in taking people and chauffeuring people around, you might be better in the Ionic 6. Interior, well, what do you want me to say? It's a Peugeot, so it's going to be bloody brilliant. I love the interiors of Peugeots. Yes, they are a little bit compromised when it comes to the digital display, which we'll talk about in a moment, but in terms of ambience and how they make you feel and quality, I think they're great. Peugeot have found a way of not using the best quality materials, so you will find plastics and you'll also find some gloss black, but they've mixed them up in a way where it really doesn't matter because everything you touch and feel is really, really soft and nice and high quality. And then the other bits are just to jazz it up. So it doesn't really matter. They're not getting in the way. They're not offensive. I love the way that they're set out, all focused towards the driver. And I think that's a good thing because with electric cars, a lot of people are going for more of a lounge feel. Take for instance, the Ionic products. They're more set up to be all about the interior of the cars and everybody in them, everybody being able to enjoy the space. But actually, Peugeot have gone for more of a driver-focused feel. This is all about the driver. And I like that as a compromise between the two. So the thing with the Peugeot E308 is that Peugeot seem to have shot their own selves in their own foot with their new battery technology. 
they had to release this battery technology, but I guess they kind of always knew that when they did, everything else, well, it just wouldn't live up. Of course, this doesn't get the range of 435 miles, but that doesn't mean it's a bad car. It ticks so many other boxes. It really is one of the most stylish electric cars I think that you can buy. The range is usable and should be more than enough for most people. The charging, in my opinion, is slightly behind, but how many people do all of their charging at charging stations? Most people charge at home. I think this is still a really good option if you're looking for a station wagon or something a bit different. You want the space, but you don't want an SUV. However, that price tag does mean that you have to really think if this is the car that you're going to go for. But let me know, what do you think of the Peugeot E308? Pop it in the comments down below. I really hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Want to see more? You know what to do. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, guys, see you later.